very interesting aside there, Dr. Varmani. The railway minister's brother, a station master, a small platform, and he too is rooting for speed trains. That's what he wants to see. That, that, that is an idea that seems to be catching on, at least in the BJP for a moment and amongst their supporters. <laughs> well, you know, uh, like they say, uh, uh, what I say is, uh, it's okay to have your heads in the clouds if your feet are firmly planted on the ground. Uh, but uh, so uh, it's good to dream as long as you try to understand the actual system and that's where I brought in the governance you know I have been studying governance across government organizations everywhere it's a terrible state I agree with the chairman it's not just railways railways infected by the same bug which every other uh, thing so I don't not a special criticism but railways is probably railways. worse but it's a huge uh, yeah, than because, some of the other government because it's a huge de uh, departmental public enterprise and it's outdated in that I want form. Sanjay Jha's view Sanjay Jha from the Congress party is also joining us the railway minister his prime minister very excited about the idea Sanjay of a super fast train uh, to do to India what happens in Japan and China is the Congress as excited or will you try and find fault uh, with Modi's big idea Uh, you know, Rahul, firstly, let me tell you that uh, behind all the populism, noise of bullet train, high-speed trains, etc., the reality is that if you look at the railways' finances, I don't know how they have done their own forecasting in, this, in the budget they are likely to come up with, but the operating ratios, which is basically the fundamental uh, commercial equation on which you can see whether the railways are going to bleed financially or will they be able to stand up on their own is going to be the most crucial aspect. Now, if you, if you look at all the viewers' opinions across all TV channels, everybody is concerned first about what I have today, can we improve those standards? So I think the basic challenge for this government will be, and has been for all previous governments as well, is do you have the necessary infrastructure to service one of the largest railway networks in the world? And I think we approximately transport roughly 18 to 20 million passengers a day. It is one of the largest employers in the world as well. Now, you know, Rahul, I want to make this point here before we move on, that, you know, that puts a lot of pressure on any railway entity uh, to really bring about remarkable changes like the way this government is so far proclaiming. I don't know what the budget will say. But supposing tomorrow the price of diesel goes up again, I don't know how much they have factored in or when the pay commission costs really have to be factored for all the employees. It will make very difficult to create a surplus to modernize or to add new trains and new routes and you know, improve the entire system. So I think end of day, a lot of hype and expectation has been built up, but end of day, nothing works better than a very smart and a prudent fiscal management of any public sector or a government entity which has a commercial outlook that cannot be okay important. stay with me it's a big day for the Gouda family we've seen what his brother wants the minister to do here is Datti Gouda she's uh, Sadhanand Gouda's wife she's speaking to Richa Rawat and explaining what she'd like to see from her husband <coughs> let's listen in I'm very expecting uh, I don't know what is in the budget uh, after budget I <laughs> But do you think women's security and other issues will be uh, addressed? Uh, women's security, uh, this is the main issue. Uh, they give uh, in budget uh, importance to the uh, lady security uh, and uh, other things. Have you given any, any recommendations to the minister? No, no, no. <laughs> okay, any okay, so now you will be going to the parliament and listen yeah, to the budget? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And any excitement, any preparations you have uh, prepared for today? No, no, madam. That was Datti Gowda. Uh, and given their very humble origins, given the fact that his brother is a station master, given the fact that uh, this is also his first railway budget, what are the sort of expectations that Nupur you will have from the railway minister? So for the uh, first of, I think uh, I'm just going to go and uh, take on what Mr. Jha just said. Yes, mindless populism of mindless subsidies has to go. So a decision to hike the f fares, which was taken way back in February, March earlier this year in the previous government, was actually withdrawn. Um, or, or countermanded for, for the for the fear of upcoming general elections, that will actually hit badly. So. I think it was a very good decision that the hike was actually, uh, uh, the, the countermanding order was withdrawn and we went ahead with the hike. No, but there's a bigger is, idea. And, secondly, and the idea is yes. to have a real tariff authority. Yes. A tariff authority, like the petrol prices are market determined, to have a tariff authority that automatically...
increases prices as and when the need arises. Do you think, Dr. Lairi, that India is ready for a tariff authority that sets prices? Can he do it? Uh, we have seen it. We have seen it in the context of hydrocarbons. The government has been announcing for the last, I think, 15 years that will be market determined and automatic. The price of petrol now is reasonably but, market determined. Yes, but not diesel, no. sure. not kerosene. It so it may so happen that suburban trains and um, second class fare, the government will intervene. So it's very important to take a, an important decision that actually we're going to give the authority and come what may, parliamentarians are not going to shout and scream when an independent commission says this is what is going to be the tariff. And mind you, there is another important thing which we are not following. Railways are no longer a monopoly in the transport sector. There's competition from roadways. And that's why service, speed, transit time, reliability of service is very important. From 1950-51, the share of freight traffic carried by railways has gone down from about 80% to 25%. Now we look very carefully. Should we send it by train? or should we send it by road? Should we travel by bus, air, or train? So you can't keep increasing fares without increasing service. If you have to improve the service, so railways has got a big challenge of improving quality and tariff at the same no, time. But what previous ministers have done, Mr. Rana, is to ensure that their revenue generation went up. They've constantly increased freight tariff uh, and therefore pushed uh, transportation to the road sector as opposed to ensuring that it travels through train. Now, can Sadhanand Gowda be bold and say, instead of increasing freight tariff, I actually want to slash it substantially to make it more competitive? That, that is true. Once in a while, the freight traffic have been reduced to attract more traffic, and it has resulted in a better uh, freight for the rail base. Therefore, if this is the need of the hour. The cross subsidization is causing havoc with the freight traffic. As has been said, that railways traffic share of, you know, logically, economically, railways six times more energy efficient. So most of the traffic, long distance traffic, heavy uh, traffic to move by the railways. From the country's economic consideration, long term consideration, that's the best policy. How to achieve is the, it's, uh, what is happening is the reverse. So unless that is reversed once again, to make the railways uh, 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 sort of uh, the fares lower to attack more traffic. But there's no doubt. No, but lowering fares is not the only solution. We have to improve the services as well. No it's doubt a royal about. pain to try and book anything uh, on the railways. Simultaneously, you try and do it with a road mover, he'll do it so much more efficiently simultaneously, with no corruption. Simultaneously, there's no doubt about it. The service has to improve. So from that, uh, the efficiency and the implementation bug comes the picture. And one of the biggest challenge or the important internal reform which is required in the railway is the rigid control of the financial control over the executive. If the executive has the responsibility, he can be given the powers and he can overrule things and the things can be implemented. So that is a no, One of the other things that the minister, I need to take a quick break. One of the other things that the prime minister is speaking about is trying to ensure that MPs don't misuse their discretionary quota. Right. Now it would be a great idea to see the discretionary quota being done away with. But is that just wishful thinking? And uh, can they ensure, because we see so often forged letters sent out by MPs, uh, secretaries, their PSS signing letters, asking for favors. Now can Modi and Sadhanand Gowda send a message by at least doing away with the things that can be done away with? There will be a message there as well. The big question this morning, can Narendra Modi put the Indian Railways back on track? My colleague Javed Ansari spoke to Rajya Sabha Member of Parliament Rajiv Chandrasekhar at Vijay Chonk about the role that the private sector can play in trying to improve the efficiency of the Indian Railways. Here is what Rajiv Chandrasekhar said. I have with me Mr. Rajiv Chandrasekhar, Member of Parliament Rajya Sabha. Rajiv ji, you've been a great votary of opening up. You've been very supportive of governments that open up and think big. What can we expect from the railway minister? Do you think uh, having a bullet train is what the doctor ordered for the railways? No, I, I, look, uh, I think the main, main important message that will come out, in my opinion, is that the railways that have been managed for the last 10 years, 15 years, as the case may be, as a political organization, as a milch cow and an, as an organization to make announcements, will be slowly but surely transformed into a professional, viable organization that is focused on consumer safety, consumer 
benefits and being competitive vis-a-vis -vis the road segment on the issue of freight. Now that transformation for the railways is not going to be done by bullet trains alone. Bullet trains is one layer on top of what only can be a sound, viable, financially sustainable railways model. If you bullet trains cannot be the only idea, it can only be one of the various ideas. <laughs> But a lot of people saying again and again, especially those in the opposition, that Modi shouldn't really be wasting much time and energy pushing the bullet train idea because there are other more pressing problems that the railways need to deal with. But in the few minutes that we still have left, I want to deal with Mr. Rana on how we can improve the efficiency of the average railway employee. Because if somehow Modi and Gauda can achieve that, that by itself will be a big change. Is that at all possible or is the railway official beyond redemption? It is very much possible. There are executives who want to push the railway, push the projects and all that. There are large number of ideas, projects, but the main problem for the country as well as the railway is implementation. We are not able to implement at the reasonable speed. And one critical point is the excessive control or rigid control of finance over the executives, which causes havoc in the railways. Railways, <coughs> the executives somehow keep on struggling to overcome these problems, internal problems. If this one action is taken, reform is brought about, that executive is independent of the finance or financial advice. But you're fine. looking at it from a different perspective. I'm looking at it from a consumer perspective. I'm saying, Dr. Virmani, how can you improve the efficiency of the guy on the other side of the counter, the person the, uh, the Aam Aadmi actually meets, who's hugely inefficient, completely disinterested, and very corrupt? See, this is run, it's a departmental enterprise, DPE. The, it's long past. It's like 30 years too late. It needs to be converted at least into a public sector unit. We talked about regulation earlier. There is so much res resistance from the railway board to a regulatory authority. It's absurd. You know, every other uh, infrastructure sector has a regulatory authority. We've been trying for 20 years. There's a paper I wrote in 1999. Since then we have been trying but tells you how powerful these vested interests are. That is why I was warning earlier informally, I was talking to you, you got to change the organization and structure and the management of the system. Okay, if, Otherwise you if will not get benefits. The full railway benefit. minister were to announce Sanjay Jha, a bold idea, like turning the railways into a private sector, into a public sector unit, into a corporation, would the opposition create a shindi or would you support what is essentially a very good idea? Uh, you know, Rahul, uh, in the previous government, I mean, since, uh, you know, I was more a party to that government, uh, my, my internal belief has always been that what the railways needs is uh, two things, technology, greater use of technology and more training. Uh, if you, so if answer you my question. That, you know, Don't answer a question that you would like to answer. Answer the, the question railways. that I asked you, Sanjay. Well, well. Well, I'm telling you that if the railways, for example, as somebody rightly mentioned, was to augment better usage of his staff resources, what you mentioned, increasing productivity of a very vast manpower that you have, and use technology which is least cost and more efficient for the consumer, as well as beneficial for the railways. No, those are also things that right should be done. I'm asking you a straight direct that. question, but and I will repeat it. Would the Congress support Sadhanand Gowda if he were to announce in today's budget that A, he wants to privatize certain aspects of the railways, especially trying to bring in new investors on an idea like the high-speed train corridor, and secondly, if he wants to turn the railways into a corporation? Well, well let me answer that. I've got to answer that to you in a very explicit uh, sentence. As somebody mentioned before, you know, it can be made into a public sector undertaking profile, etc. But if you're doing privatization, and if you're encouraging foreign direct investment to come into railways, I don't think principally, if it augments the finances of a, of a very hard-pressed entity, nobody will object to it, provided the terms of entry or exit do not encourage crony capitalism, and do okay. not result in, you know, the very closely associated entities getting a foothold. By the way, in railways, whose assets Okay. are so undervalued. If you look at the property and yeah. multiple assets is grossly undervalued. So that would that's be a true. great area of concern. And so that's something that your railway minister spoke about but did very little about. Now the question is can Sadhanand Gowda be different and turn the talk into action?